welcome back to another video. Today is Ultrasound Wednesday. I will be interviewing today my student, Allie, and she's gonna give you some insight on her journey, how she started, how she liked the program, and is she ready to go into the real world of ultrasound. If you're new here, my name is Tamika, and I am a wife, a mother, and an ultrasound tech, and that's what my videos are all about. I vlog, on the weekends, I show my family, we have a blast, but I also wanna give insight of what I do in the career of ultrasonography or sonographers. Um, a lot of you guys have questions, so that's pretty much what this video is about as well. Some of my viewers have been students and asking questions, mm -hmm. and I know that you're at your end of your program now. I think you have, what, like two, three months left? I really hope so, yes. <laughs> So on this journey from start to present time, would you categorize it as being difficult, easy, or something that you just have to like do to get used to it? Um, so overall, I think it's been rather, I want to say easy, but simple. I would use that um, because the way the school was set up and stuff, um, they just made it super easy to transition into and transition out of. Um, yes, it is a lot of work, but the school is there, your classmates are there, and they work with you. So I wouldn't say it was difficult in any such way. If you want to do it, you're going to do it. And mm -hmm. If you just, put your mind to it, huh? Yeah. If this is what you truly want. Mm -hmm. um, now, your background, is it previous medical and then you transitioned to this or? Yeah, so I did, I was a neurobiology, physiology and behavior major, major at Davis. So I already had that pre-med anatomy classes, science biology classes and that kind of stuff. So maybe that's another thing that made it easier because I had the background in it. Mm -hmm. But I think if you just come into it with any sort of background, if you, because I never had a background going into Davis either, so right, right. if you... Now, like, if you didn't have that background, do you feel that you would be more behind as far as you, what you know, your knowledge, or at, still at the same level of knowledge? Um, I don't think... I'd probably work hard to be at the same level that I am now, but then again, you always think, because I had the background, so it's like I wasn't, I was like, oh, I already know this, you know, I kind of just kind of skimmed through some chapters and stuff like that, and I think that's what made it more easier on mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, I kind of already know this, we'll just review it, it's more right. like a review instead of right. sitting down. So someone who studying. doesn't have that medical type of pre-med mm -hmm. background um, coming into this, they can come in with an art degree, uh, English major, mm -hmm. um, or just off the street, you know, someone that wants mm -hmm. to really get into ultrasound. Do you feel that, like, um, I think I know what you're trying to say. So it just pretty much what your drive is in terms yeah. of if you want this, you're going to work hard for it. Mm -hmm. And you just would have to put more time and time mm -hmm. and effort into it. More than studying. Other people who already have the background. Right. But don't let that, Be a you know, discourage you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have gone through the didactic portion of your course, what, 12 months? Mm -hmm. And then um, now you're on your internship. Is it two years or is it 18 months? Um, this was the 18th, 18 month program. Okay. Um, we started, I skipped the anatomy physiology portion of okay. it because I already had that, that background. Okay. But they offer that for people who don't. And I went straight into the physics, so I started in. August, I think, instead of July. Okay. So you start in August and then you do the 18 month, and then there's kind of like a small waiting period in between your didactic and your externship to where it's like this onboarding internship portion okay. where you're kind of waiting to get assigned Place. and stuff, and that's when you do all your, like your practice scans to get okay. practice and scanning and. Okay. Do you feel like without your practice scans, you would have not been able to scan on your internship right now? Or did that help you or did it not um, really help you? No, it definitely helped because 
the way it's set up is you do abdomen first. Mm -hmm. So you scan the liver, the abdomen, and then you do gyne, OB, vascular, and then you're going to do your externship. So if we never went back and reviewed right. the abdomen and re-scanned that and practiced that, there's... No. Now, is your school accredited? It's accredited for one thing, but not for another. I can't off the top Don't know what the two is. But they're working on the second accreditation. No. That. Um, I ask that question because a lot of techs or a lot of, not techs, but a lot of people who want to get into this field, they're fearful of going to a not accredited school mm -hmm. or what have you. What are your views on that? I was definitely nervous about it at first, but um, cause we, cause the accreditation that my school doesn't have, and you know, UC Davis Medical Center wants that accreditation. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that can like hinder you from getting certain jobs. But in the long run, I don't think it, it's gonna hinder me in mm -hmm. a major, mm -hmm. major way. I'm gonna ask you, the question of your internship site. Is it what you expected? Do you want more out of your externship site? And did the school prepare you for your externship site? Three questions in one, sorry. Okay, um, so was it what I expected? No, I definitely didn't, I guess I didn't really know what I expected for an externship site. I guess I was assuming that they were all going to be hospitals mm -hmm. for some reason, and I just assumed that I was going to be, you know, moving from room to room and doing that, like going to the patients. Um, I wasn't really prepared for an outpatient facility, but um, in hindsight, but you know, in hindsight, I'm actually glad that I got an externship site here in an outpatient facility considering that it's more slow paced, I get to dip my feet in, you know, I'm kind of working my way up to the more hustle and bustle of a hospital. So this way it gives me um, more time to work with the patients, um, more one-on-one -on -one with my um, clinical instructor because she's able to show me the patient, we can introduce ourselves, she can go s slowly through the patient <laughs> and, um, so it's it's nice here and yeah. I don't know what the <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now it's weird. I know, I know, I know, right? So with that being said, um did the school prepare you for your externship site? Um yeah, they prepared me for the different Scans. They gave me a good general education about what I'm possibly going to be doing. Um, the only thing I would say is that it's definitely different here than it is when you scan the same person over and over again. You kind of get into the habit of just knowing what you're doing, knowing what you're looking for. It's the same people over and over again. And here it's like you actually have to work the anatomy because you don't know oh their right kidney might be lower their left kidney might be all the way in the back but overall you know where the anatomy is and how to find it so so they did a good job at preparing you mm -hmm. for your externship awesome um where do you see yourself going from here um so wherever hires me honestly i'm i would totally go to another outpatient facility where it's slow but in the end I would love to work in a hospital and get that faster pace and just the experience of working in a hospital I think that's probably not what everyone strives for but that's what I'm striving for that seems like the goal here. your confidence, you're knocking it out of the park. Um, one thing for sure is that a tech should always have confidence. And I think that's rule number one, you know, with, with ultrasound as a tech and as a student, if you walk into a facility as a student and you're on your internship site and you're kind of like 
reserved, not really wanting to dive in, you're not gonna do well. But if you come into the facility like you did, okay, yeah, I can do it after me. Oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, it's not a problem. Even with questions, we're more accepting of teaching someone like that versus someone who's timid. We gotta coerce them into doing the exams um, or they want to have the seasoned tech or their clinical instructor scan all the time and they don't wanna dive in or touch the patient. Mm -hmm. We're really reluctant on teaching those mm -hmm. type of students. So when you get hired on at a place, you're not gonna have your clinical instructor there, right? Mm -hmm. So your confidence is gonna have to be there from your externship site, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna walk into a facility and you're like, oh my God, I'm, this is my first day on the job. I'm, where do I go? <laughs> your nerves is gonna take the best of you. But if you have that confidence, like what I'm telling you, you have to have, and you don't mind asking questions because we'll, you know, I've been there. I've been that tech where students, well, new hires just come on and it's their first. We don't mind answering questions. I should say, um, so don't be so like, oh my God, I can't go ask this question because I'm going to feel dumb or they're going to look at me weird. I think that's another thing that makes this better here is that I'm able to ask questions because in a hospital, sometimes you're rushing from patient to patient that Absolutely. you forget like, oh, I meant to ask this, like what happened here? Here it's like after patient, we have some time and I can be like, what was this that you saw? Why did you do this? What? Right. You know, so I think that's another thing that is now good patient, to start here. Right, mm -hmm. right. Have more time to actually go detailed with you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we're in a hospital, I'd like, okay, we're doing an abdomen, there was a liver cyst, go ahead and write that down. Or mm -hmm. what did you see? And it's got to be quick paced. Like, oh, I mm -hmm. saw this, this, and this. It's not, no, we don't really have that room to say, okay, let's sit down and look at this. Let's sit down mm -hmm. and research this. Being in a hospital, you're, you're going to be fine. But mm -hmm. definitely stay one year at least minimal before mm -hmm. you move on to the next spot, the next, you know, modality or whatever, as far as like, now I want to go do vascular, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> it's stay at one place, mm -hmm. stay at one place for a year, absorb everything that you could possibly absorb in that one year. Mm -hmm. And you'll have the, you'll be, you'll be awesome to any tech one year mm -hmm. minimal. Now that you're at your end of your program, um, what kind of advice would you give to someone who's entering and someone who is thinking about going into ultrasound? Um, I always tell people just do it. Like if they are thinking about them, like do it. It's two years and then you're basically in the field you're working it instead of, you know, like being a doctor. Oh, you have four years of school, four years residency, four years internship, and then you're finally a doctor. So. I have a lot of people ask me what I'm doing, like, oh, I'm an ultrasound, you know, I'm in school for an ultrasound tech, and they're like, I've been thinking about doing that, and they're always thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, just do it. Do it. Like, there's nothing stopping you, and then if you don't like it, then, you know, then at least you know. Right, at least you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly, I get it. I mean, my thing but, is, is that if you're gonna start it, definitely finish it, because you never mm -hmm. know where down the line it can mm -hmm. take you. But because definitely in the beginning, you think it's hard. I remember my first time scanning, I could not find the left kidney or the spleen to save my life. And I'm like, I'm dumb. I hate this. Like there, you know, there's times you want right. to quit. There's times you're like, I can't do this. Right. And then you get the one time when you actually like find the left kidney and you're like, oh my oh. goodness, I found <laughs> it. Like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. I can right, do this. Right, so. exactly. Now you're doing full <laughs> under 30 minutes, which is amazing. That's good advice. Just do it. I tell the people, mm -hmm. I tell people that the same thing. If you're gonna do something, do it. Mm -hmm. and don't procrastinate. Don't wait because those that time is gonna pass you anyways. Mm -hmm. And why not be investing into your future? Mm -hmm. So definitely, I want to thank you, Allie, so much. <laughs> Sorry for this up earlier, <laughs> but you've been a trooper, and yeah. thank you. Yeah, of course. thanks so much, and yeah. congratulations. I really hope this video was beneficial and it answers some of your questions. If you have more, leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you a part of our family.